This video gives rules for calculating derivatives of functions that are products or quotients of other functions. In this video, you'll find statements of the product rule and the quotient rule and some examples, but no proofs. Proofs are in a separate video. Before we start, let's recall the sum and the difference rules. If f and g are differentiable functions, then the derivative of the sum f of x plus g of x is just the sum of the derivatives. And a similar statement holds for differences. The derivative of the difference is the difference of the derivatives. So does the same sort of rule hold for products of functions? In other words, is the derivative of the product equal to the product of the derivatives? Let's look at a simple example to find out. For example, if f of x is x and g of x is x squared, then if we take the derivative of the product, x times x squared, well, that's just the derivative of x cubed. We know how to do that with the power rule, so it's 3x squared. On the other hand, if we look at the product of the derivatives, we get 1 times 2x, or just 2x, and these two things are not equal. So unfortunately, the answer is no. Such a simple product rule does not hold. But note lose hope. There is a product rule. It's just a little more complicated than the sum and difference rule. The product rule says that if f and g are differentiable functions, then the derivative of the product, f of x times g of x, is equal to f of x times the derivative of g of x plus the derivative of f of x times g of x. In other words, to take the derivative of a product, we take the first function times the derivative of the second plus the derivative of the first times the second. Let's use this in an example. To take the derivative of the square root of t times e to the t, we have to take the first function, square root of t, times the derivative of the second function, plus the derivative of the first function, times the second function. So that's the square root of t times the derivative of e to the t is just e to the t. And to find the derivative of the square root of t, it's going to be easier to write it in exponential form. Now we can just use the power rule, bring down the 1 half, t to the 1 half minus 1 is negative 1 half, and I found the derivative. I'm going to clean this up a little bit, and I'm done. In this example, we're asked to find the derivative of the product where the first function is pi x squared and the second function is f of x. We don't know much about f of x, but we do know its value when x equals 5 and its derivative when x equals 5. And as we'll see, that's enough to calculate the derivative of this product at x equals 5. So according to the product rule, the derivative of this product is the first function times the derivative of the second function plus the derivative of the first function, well, that's 2 pi x times the second function. Now we want to evaluate this at x equals 5. So I'll plug in 5 for x where I can. The derivative of f of x when x equals 5 can also be written as f prime of 5, and we actually know that value. It's 3. Continuing to plug in, f of 5, we also know that value. That's 20. So our product here is going to be pi times 5 squared times 3. That's 75 pi plus 20 times 5 times 2 pi. That's 200 pi 
And so our final answer is 275 pi. The quotient rule says that the derivative of a quotient of two functions is given by this quotient. On the denominator, we have the denominator function g of x squared. And on the numerator, we have g of x times the derivative of f of x minus f of x times the derivative of g of x. The way I remember this is this chant. If you think of f of x as the high function and g of x as the low function, you can say this is low d high minus high d low over low low, where low low means the low function squared. Let's start with a pretty simple example. So this derivative, taking this back to z here, we put the low low on the bottom, and then we go low d high, derivative of z squared is 2z, minus high d low, the derivative of z cubed plus 1 is 3z squared plus 0. Don't really need to write the 0 there. I can simplify here a little bit. 2z to the 4th plus 2z minus 3z to the 4th over, I'm not going to bother multiplying out this denominator. I think it looks simpler with it factored. Uh, so when I cancel things on the numerator, I'm getting 2z minus z to the 4th over z cubed plus 1 squared as the derivative of my quotient. For my last example, I'm going to need to use both the quotient rule and the product rule here. But let's start with the quotient rule. So I'm taking the derivative of x e to the x over x squared plus 3 e to the x. So I've got on the denominator x squared plus 3 e to the x squared. And on the numerator, I've got low d high minus high d low. Okay, so now I'm going to need to use the product rule to take the derivative of x e to the x. So that would be x times the derivative of e to the x, which is just e to the x, plus the derivative of x, which is 1, times e to the x. And now I can take the derivative of x squared plus 3 e to the x, and that is 2x plus 3 e to the x. It's possible to multiply this out and simplify a bit, remembering that e to the x times e to the x gives us e to the 2x. And grouping like terms on the top, we get this slightly simplified answer. So in this video, we saw the product rule and the quotient rule. I've written the rules here using the prime notation instead of the ddx notation, but you should check that the formulas are really the same as before. For the proofs of these fabulously useful rules, you'll have to watch the next video.